they're growing these ioniums through winter in a mini greenhouse actually help them? Can they actually grow outside without protection? That is the question. Good morning, my lovelies. How are you today? I finally removed the covering for this mini greenhouse that I got here. And so today I am going to move things around. First are these cactus that a lot of them has already been cactus. That means dead <laughs> in slang Australian. When someone says, ah, oh, you're cactus, it's like you're dead. Anyway, some are still alive. But I'm not going to go into detail here because it's very, very hard to hold this camera. But anywho, I need to move these ones up the top. Because these ones, I try to protect them <laughs> from the frost. But in the process, I ended up killing a few of them because it got too hot with that plastic on top, even in winter. So now, oops, are you going to... Ah! couple of them have dropped, but doesn't matter. Please cooperate. Ah, ah bugger. Now the Australian's <laughs> saying, never mind. <laughs> dropping, it's dropping. Okay. Ah, oops. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Hang on. I have a problem here as well. I haven't supported the top. I need to put a wire across here just so it stops the whatever from going there. But anyway, so can you see the bottom there? There's no support. And this little flimsy um, sort of mesh that sort of goes across. Uh, see how that bellows down and eventually it's gonna drop. So I'm gonna support it with a wire. See that bottom there, see how it's not tight because there's still a gap. And what I like to do is just twist it like this. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And with the, that was, by the way, long nose pliers, a rusty one. And then this one now, the flat. Oh. There you go. Just twist it to tighten it. And see, that's already a lot better. And then I'm going to do another one over here to tighten it up. And I'll do that later on. But for now, we're going to go around and check out the result of protecting all these beautiful babies here and the difference it made having them grown in the mini greenhouse all through winter. I will clean this up later on, all these things here, and it's already dropped a few on my granite from the top. Look, oh, I have to straighten that out. But anyway, we're here to check out the difference in growing them in a mini greenhouse uh, compared to none. So I'm going to take as an example, because I've got a few of them, is my pink witch over here. Can you hear? Beautiful one. Hang on. <sighs> There you go. I'll take this one. Isn't this gorgeous? This is my sort of semi-protected area. Semi-protected in the sense that it has covering up above. And when it gets frosty or during winter, the frost doesn't settle on top of these plants that are in here, which is in bad condition. So mostly Ioniums. So different types of Ionium. And look, red garnet over there, that's actually one plant that I can compare with the other one there. So that is my mother, red garnet. And these ones are a combination of different ones. So there's a few names in there, I'm not going to even delve into that, but they are in bad condition. And this is the pink witch, my original mother pink witch. This is what I'm going to bring out to compare with the other protected pink witch. And this one is called Ionium lily pad. Hello, lily pad. This one, I just put that there about a week ago because it has been growing under there. <laughs> I snuck it in here and it's protected. It's more protected. So it's got lots of protection from the frost. And I have another lily pad down in the bottom there. So that lily pad there is not looking very well. It's still alive and that's the most important thing, but mainly that's from lack of watering. So 
that doesn't look as well as this lily pad here. So now I'll take this pink witch with me now. So this pink witch and that pink witch, which is one is better. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Is this a better one? Look at it. Oh, poor babies. Look at you. All dry and needed cleaning up. It's not as crunchy as some. And all the little babies, look at that, needs to be cleaned up. Anyway, that's still salvageable, this one. But this one that's been growing inside the greenhouse, or the mini greenhouse, this one is more exposed to sunlight, which is nice and pink. And the one that's in the back is a little bit on the pale side. But nevertheless, still beautiful. See the difference? So this is the importance of growing succulents, specifically aeonium, during winter, uh, having it protected. They grow much better and they will fare much better, be able to handle the frost really, better than others. With some of you who's growing aeoniums in tropical places, well, you actually have no problem with growing them in winter, of course, because you don't get frost. But in summer, they do suffer. When I say they do suffer, is because that's when they go dormant in summer. Like most succulents, when it gets too hot, they go dormant. When it gets too cold, they go dormant. So contrary to popular belief that certain succulents, oh, there's a summer dormancy and winter dormancy, I myself, this is just my opinion, I don't believe in that. I believe it's temperature that controls the growth of a lot of succulents. So as evidently shown here now, you can tell the difference. And also I've got another yonium. Let's just take a snapshot of these two and I'll take you to the other one that is grown uh, on my front door. <laughs> so this one, you can see that all these Ionium kiwi, sunbursts, uh, bigger sunbursts, the last of my crested sunbursts in the middle here, which I need to propagate soon before it gets too hot. Oh, look at you down in the bottom there. And these ones in the corner are also pink witch. And these are already baby propagations that I put here and they have grown so much bigger. They try and grow big to try and catch the light, basically. So they need the light to grow. They need to feed. And that right now is a little bit on the malnourished side, but that's fine. But I've got a few. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is probably more in the bottom. But anyway, so, so far, lucky seven, I can see on this Ionium that has survived the winter frost. So I can grow the Ioniums now in front well, on my front door during winter, but I am not going to grow it over there in the backyard anymore. So this is my front of my house. And all these plants now that I've got here, my chavrilla, they need to come out of here now as well. So these ones as well. I probably won't grow these ones in here over winter. I will take these ones actually at the back because they are hardier for frost than the Ionium, so they will have to go back into the backyard where I had them growing healthily one winter when I had them protected and not exposed them to the frost. But for now, I'm gonna take them all out here and move it over there behind the scaffold. Yes, I managed to install my scaffold, so I'm ready to clean that up now, but I have to wait till we have good weather and today is better than yesterday because yesterday and the day before that was just horrendous. It was really, really windy. And of course, luckily yesterday, I wasn't here. <laughs> I got called onto something very exciting. I got called for a jury duty selection, actually. It was just a selection that I went to yesterday. And unluckily, I did not get selected. Oh, I wish I was part of the 12, but anyway. It would have been an interesting case. But anywho, I was really hoping for that. And so yesterday after, I was really in high spirit. And after coming from um, <laughs> jury selection, I got a little bit depressed. So 
This is now the irony of this all. A chit chat with you, I'm just gonna scan and inspect my succulents here that needs attending. So Ben is here, needs to be cleaned up. And actually, these ones now, they need to be propagated. So I need to clean it up and uh, I can't take it inside, but I can just break them off. I won't do that now because I think it's going to rain again. It's still, okay, blue sky, but look, the band of clouds right above. Everything else is gray. Like what I'm wearing today, I'm also wearing gray, maybe to match up the we gray weather. So my band buddies is quite beautiful, nice, small, compact, but they need to be propagated. So this one's got two heads and the other one's got two heads. So that one's got three, four heads. I'm going to get more plants out of that. They might be small now, but in say six months time, they will get bigger. Now this red edge here needs to be cleaned up. This is got to be one of the hardiest plant. And one of the first uh, agavoides that I fell in love with. And no hassle, easy to grow. It's a matter of planting it in the ground. You start from one plant and look how many heads it's got now. But this has taken a few years. Had it not been grown in a small pot, that would probably be a lot bigger, like my other red edge in the backyard. But this golden nugget here is not doing very well. It doesn't look very golden, isn't it? So I think it's got a lot of sooty mold that has affected it, so I don't really like plants that are difficult. So anyway, oh look, another uh, red edge and so many other plants. Now, I'm gonna continue with my story. So about a month ago now, I uploaded a video uh, saying, cry with me. Oh, look, another candidate for cleaning up. And uh, after I posted that video, so while I was editing that, I was crying, well, of course, filming it. I did a little cry, but uh, all throughout editing it, oh my goodness, the wire, uh, the, the wire works. <laughs> the tears just wouldn't stop flowing. But after I uploaded it, I actually stopped crying. I could not believe it. Oh, I've got another Parpasarum or Shamrock here. But anyway, I think, never mind. Parpasarum? I, I don't know. Anyway, I will know later on. I, I, I can't remember. My brain is like clouded up right now. So all these plants, I got this from a friend of mine, a couple of them with no name. I think it's lovely key or something like that. But anyway, oh, look, this is Victoretta. I have to attend to you because you need to be, look, transplanted. And anyway, so what's my story now? So many plants. Now Rubra here, let's go. I can't help myself. Anyway, I need to harvest this. So basically when I came back from my jury selection, I was okay until I got home. I was a mess. Uh, and then I couldn't stop crying the whole night again. Okay, this is terrible. Hang on. I got the neighbor to slam the door. Thank you, neighbor. Now it sort of stopped me from crying. Okay, now this one, I need to put this one over here. Empty pots for my Orostakis. So it's almost a month of I'm really good. And out of the blue, something just triggered it and whew, and yesterday that made me realize that spring is almost here and I was thinking of uh, going back to work or finding a job first of course and then working and then I realized yesterday that I'm not ready because something or someone will just trigger something in this little brain of mine that I'm going to be back in the state that I'm in right now. So I thought, oh, hang on, look, look what I found here. Some plants. I thought that I'm best doing something that can occupy my mind and make me happy. I got a pot of Sempervivum here that I've been itching to clean up. But every time the wind blows or it rains or it's too cold or whatever, I always have an excuse. Well, it's not my fault. It's the weather's fault. <laughs> so I figured, actually, that's the reason why probably I'm a little bit touchy. It's because of the weather. And hang on. I got a pen and labels here. <laughs> now, this is Bernstein or something like that, I think. Oh, come on. Yep. Bernstein. Hang on. Okay, I got the label. Oh, hang on, there's another one here I need to do label. But this one, 
I need to take this and drop it here for now. I will come back to that later on. And another one, see how all the roots are growing. And then this other one here, which is ashes of roses. <laughs> These ashes of roses. Look, look at the roots. So ashes of roses, again, label. And I'm just going to pinch that one and that one. And hang on, up the top. Oh, I love Sempervivum. I love Agavoides. <laughs> I love a lot of plants. So now that one, uh, it's still uh, got roots. But anyway, so that's stuck. So at least I got one, two, three, four, five. Anyway, I put that aside. I'll come back with that later on. <laughs> Unless I forget. No, I won't. Because I've been really itching to propagate them. And look at how beautiful this burns thing is. Oh my goodness, that is so gorgeous. Oh, look, I'm gushing over. It's like translucent, isn't it? Like, I like see-through plants. See, I wonder if someone will come up with a completely transparent plant one day. Huh, you never know. And also, this one. Ooh, I can see mealybug. I can see some mealybug hiding in there. Look. So I just need my methyl and she'll be good. Anyway, I'm doing inspection. This is actually a sieve for prospecting for gold. That's what it's used for. Big sieve actually was a sapphire a sieve from probably this is about 50 years old. That thing there, at least 50 years old. Anyway, uh, my husband was gonna throw that away and then I thought, no, nothing gets thrown out here. So I have been waiting for something to grow so I can put in there. So anyway, come with me. Look what I got here. I have been meaning to put this one over there. Okay, that's a big pot. Really, look, look at my hand, that is huge, beautiful. Now, if I can find somewhere. Oh, oops, oh, look at that, ha, there you go. It's only, I think, not a very big pot. And so I'm walking here, walking. Dead plants walking, no it's not. <laughs> Live plants walking. So I'm just gonna swing this with one hand, one camera. We have to go, see, swing, swing, one, two, boop. Ah, that was a good one. Okay, so that was the whole idea. So I want that to sprawl down and grow over this big thingamajig there, sieve. And I wanna put some soil uh, inside there. Okay, I just removed the snail. Sorry, snail. I'm not gonna step on you because I still have to walk inside anyway. I'm sorry. Okay, now you can see some pots in there. That's supposed to have some plants in there, but I still don't know what plants I'm gonna put in there. But anyway, <laughs> this one now, I'm gonna fill that up with soil and I will show you that in the future videos. But I thought I'll just say hello while the weather is still good. Uh, well, it's not good, it's windy. But anyway, I'll come back to you, okay? Promise. So anyway, guys, as I walk to here, now I have to find spots for this. And also, yes, I just remembered, I need to plant my potatoes. So I have to pick one of these pots here. So this one's got strawberries. I am not go going to grow strawberries. The reason why I grow strawberries before is to encourage my husband to come out and pick strawberries so he can exercise. But of course, that's already water under the bridge. And so even this one, this tomato, it's for him to come here and pick tomatoes in the morning because that's what he was supposed to do. But anyway, I had a blueberry before and I got rid of it. And then, uh, because I was growing some succulents and then Hubby wanted to pick some blueberries again. So I went and bought three plants actually, just so I can come out here and pick stro uh, blueberries, which he did for um, a couple of days, <laughs> but even that, that's worth it, you know, having it. So now I'm in two minds whether I should grow it or not, because it takes up a lot of watering. And with my lifestyle now, I won't be here most of the time <laughs> to do some watering. I'll be out of the house and maybe months on end so i can't really water this and it's not fair to get someone to water it but anyway guys i better bid you adieu and that's another project i want to do 
clean up all this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <gasps> look at all the sedum, the sedum. Oh, look at you. Fatum. <laughs> I forgot the full name. There's a name for it. There's a fat version. But anyway, look at the colors. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, it's burgundy. It's a burgundy. It's like a burnt gundy. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this video. And I have to sort out my little greenhouse here or mini greenhouse and move all the plants up and expose them now to the sun. What I want to do is basically take out all those pretty ones in here that has grown so well. Look at all of them. Oh, my beautiful Ioniums. I do love Ionium. Okay. So if one day I build a uh, greenhouse, like a fixed structure in my backyard here. It will be because of these Ioniums. I love these plants. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got. So this one's now is going to move up into the world and move up to the top there. And of course, down in the bottom here, I'm going to replace these ones with the other Ioniums that needs to be rehabilitated. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got. Bye-bye for now. And this Sedum Clavatum Varigatum is looking very well. This is one of my, I think that's the mother pot. I can't remember now. There's two pots. There's a bigger pot inside that's growing under the grow light. And this one, I brought it out here the last few weeks when the frost wasn't too bad. Anyway, bye for now. And for those of you who hasn't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and also comment down below. See what time is it in your country that you're in and sometimes I have to keep checking the time from people I don't even know whether to say good morning or good night <laughs> because I like to say good evening but it's already probably morning in your area see that's the thing so uh, let me know what time it is at your place when you make a comment and I will get back to you shortly I was really hoping that I get selected for jury duty so that way that will get my mind off things that would have been good two weeks trial it might even go into three weeks apparently but I was hopeful but I know of course I'm realistic you know there's like 50 people that they have to choose from and it's a lottery so I thought oh that would be a good excuse to get my mind off things of you know who anyway you think it gets easy it doesn't and I probably will never get easy on me <laughs> so the load I'm carrying sometimes will fill up with air, but then sometimes gets filled up with lead again. So anyway, this one here now, look how gorgeous you are. This is Atlantis that needs to be watered. Look, those new babies popping out. Oh my goodness, so exciting. Here at Wally here, just cleaning his shoes. Getting ready to leave Agar Creek. So we're just sort of packing up and talking to some people here that we met. Peter and Gunther. Peter and, and Gunther, who we've met yesterday from digging up a black soil uh, creek. And they're very nice people. And then this young, young man standing next to him is a very promising young geologist. He's only 19 years old and they're from Luxembourg. Yeah, I'm going to pop scan three.